Hallelujah. 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 You change everything, oh Lord. You change everything. You change everything. You change everything. By the power of your mighty hand, you change everything. By the power of your spirit, you change everything. You're changing hearts right now, God, today, right now, here in this room. But we thank you for your overwhelming presence that draws us unto yourself, for your spirit. Oh, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We say yes to you, oh God. Yes. We say yes. We surrender our lives to you. Your will be done, oh God. Your will be done, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Put a new song in the hearts of your people. Put a new song in the hearts of your people. Lord, I thank you for this worship team who have left us now in this place of complete surrender to you. I pray that you would renew them and strengthen them. I thank you for every musician, for every vocalist, Thank you for our dear sister, Danielle. I thank you, Lord God, for her ministry. I thank you for the anointing on her life. I thank you, Lord, I pray that she would protect her as she continues to step out in faith and believe for more. Enlarge her platform. I thank you for this church, oh God. Thank you for the people who you are raising up. Your sons and daughters called unto your name for your glory to bear witness of this great gospel. Hallelujah. I thank you for deliverance that is happening here at Soul Cry Church. I thank you, Lord. I see it in the spirit. People are being set free by the blood of the lamb. Set free. Chains are falling off chains are falling off they're broken now in the name of Jesus 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 glory to your name you may be seated if you can hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah oh man praise God Thank you, Twyla. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you, Landon. Thank you, Landon. Praise God. Praise God. Soon enough, Landon will be able to play by ear. We look forward to that day. Oh, praise God. Praise God. I'm just in awe of just what the Lord is doing in his church my wife and i together are just so grateful for just the leading of the holy spirit um i just want to say too we are we are thankful for just the encouragement um, the encouragement and the prayer and the kind words that that you share constantly um and we're, we're blessed by just the love in this community it's overwhelming at times. It's special. It's unique. And the Lord made it very clear to me this week, I'm, I'm raising up my church. I'm raising up my church. I'm raising up my church. And so that's the word that the Lord has given me today. We're on the rise. There's a church on the rise. And, and as we see a rise in, in our society that pertains to so much darkness, in the midst of that, a church is rising up here in this city. And, and I believe God is calling every church to recognize this moment that we're in, this, this, this very critical 11th hour where we are seeing 
wars and rumors of wars and sickness and disease and pain and violence and suffering. 23,000 people have died now in Syria and Turkey. And the numbers continue to climb. Catastrophic, painful, overwhelming sometimes to just stop and think. And the news has been overwhelming. That spirit of violence is, is running rampage in, in our city. The stories get darker and darker. But is there a church that will rise above darkness and evil, hold up the light of Christ, call men and women unto him, Jesus to save them. Church, we need a savior. And we are the body of Christ and we have a responsibility to bear witness of Christ and who he is as savior. Would you Go with me to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, beginning in verse 6. I'm just going to read just three verses here, 6 through 8. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. Everyone say up and down on it. Verse 8, and the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? I'm going to stop right there. I, I, I believe that God had a moment here, boasting about Job, letting Satan know that Job is a servant, unique, set apart, walking in humility, pursuing righteousness, and he will reject evil. And now, clearly what we also see here in Scripture is that Satan is not completely banned from the presence of God. But he no longer had the right up and down on the highest levels of God's holy mountain in the kingdom. Let me give you a little bit more context about this character, Satan, before we now call him Satan, before who we know him to be now. He had another name, Lucifer. And Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 15, gives us a little bit of an understanding who this character was and what led to his fall and his new name, Satan, the devil. Well, in Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, and this is God speaking through the prophet regarding Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. And this is what the Lord says in verse 13. You with me? Say amen. amen. Lucifer, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. You still with me? Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. Meaning you've been sent to hell, Lucifer. Because there's been one too many I wills. Listen, the devil didn't just fall out of heaven. God pushed him out of heaven, along with one-third of the angels, who we now know also as demons. 
Just to give you a little bit more context regarding this character, Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan, a.k.a. the devil, a.k.a. enemy number one. Verse 12 of chapter 28. Son of man, raise a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the signet of perfection. Talking about Lucifer. You were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Scripture gives us an understanding of how detailed this creation was when God created Lucifer. Verse 13, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle. And crafted in gold were your setting and your engravings. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. It's very interesting because in the King James Version of verse 13, on the second half of this verse, it says this. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee. In the day that thou wast created. Meaning, Lucifer was created in such a unique way. Not just adorned with precious stones. But God had built something very unique in Lucifer. It was really scripture referring to tambourines and pipes. Meaning, instruments. We, we can safely assume that there were instruments built inside of Lucifer, which means we can also safely assume that Scripture hints to the idea that Lucifer was this high-ranking angel that led the other angels in worship. But Lucifer comes to a place where he thinks he don't need God. Matter of fact, maybe I could be God. When I look at my covering, the topaz and the diamonds, oh, the diamonds, the barrel, the onyx, jasper, sapphire, and emerald, and I've got these instruments, every, every, every pipe, which means every, every wind instrument has been built inside of me. If it's referring to tambourines, then just maybe there was this kind of percussion that was built inside of him. And you wonder why sometimes music has a way of trapping people and restricting you and keeping you from moving beyond where you're at emotionally. Because really music has a way of just feeding your emotion. Or maybe music also has a way of just feeding your pride. I don't know about you, but if the right song comes on, it, it, it can change my whole outfit for the day. You ever, no really, you ever wonder why music has such an incredible impact on our lives in society. Depending on what song comes on on your playlist will determine whether you lean in left or right in the car. Whether it's going to come down or whether you're going to switch it or whether you're going to turn it up. Y'all know that look you give to that person who pulls up beside you when you're playing that favorite song? Can't nobody say nothing about you. You ever wonder where that emotion comes from? That feeling of, of feeling like, feeling like can't, you, when, when this record's on, you can't say nothing about me. This worship leader, you were blameless in your way from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. In the abundance of your trade, you were, you were filled with violence in your midst and, and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O guardian cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. The stones of fire were, it, it, the stones of fire are, are, are a reflection of the, the multi-level 
places that you can find yourself in the kingdom of God. Rem remember, remember, oh, let me hold that. Because I want to talk to you again about that up and down place. The, your heart was proud because of your beauty, Lucifer. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. You got really excited about your song. So I cast you to the ground. I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you. Pride brought him to this fall. And pride still today will rob you of the position and purpose of God in your life. It's, it's okay to be ambitious. It's okay to strive after good things and, and in the hope to achieve and, and, to, and to do better. But pride corrupts ambition. And the evidence of unhealthy ambition is when you spend more time declaring I will rather than praying not my will, but you'll be done. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And in the message Bible, it says it clearly like this. First pride, then the crash, the bigger the ego, the harder the fall. Let me say this. Church, ego will cripple your testimony. And I've also discovered that church ego cripples the testimony of God's house. If the church is going to rise up in this hour as a witness, we have to resist pride. Pride. Pride that makes us feel like we're better than others. Pride that makes us feel like nobody worships the way we worship at Soul Cry Church. Pride, pride that causes us to think that we're strong enough to move forward without the word. Meaning that, let, let's, 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 just, let's, just, let's just make sure we have hangouts and meet at the coffee shop and do lunch and, you know, have outings. But without the word, we're not moving anywhere. Pride that causes us to think that maybe sometimes... The Holy Spirit can lead, but other times I just need to trust my instincts. Pride. Pride that ultimately deceives us into thinking, I don't need to confess the little sins. They're not really a big deal. That pride that causes us to forget that we've been saved by grace and grace alone. That pride that causes us to forget that we desperately need a savior each and every day. That pride that causes us to think that there are some things that I can take care of myself and there are some things that I'll call on God for. And God is saying to us, I need you to submit to my word, submit to my spirit, resist the devil, and walk in the power that is going to cause my church to rise up and stand firm in the face of darkness and evil. In Luke 10, I've got to move along a little faster here. Luke 10, listen to me in verse 17. The 72 returned one day with joy. Jesus had sent them out. Just two, 72 guys, rough around the edges, completely jacked up, really imperfect. But God in his grace sent 72 out. They return with joy saying, Lord, oh man, even the demons, they're subject to us in your name. And he said this to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus was actually being very modest here when he said this. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. But what he didn't tell them in the moment was, I actually pushed him out. Because he started feeling himself. I put all that gold and diamond, all them instruments in his hand, and suddenly he just felt like he could be me and better than me. And he forgot who gets all the glory. 
and all the praise. So I, 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 I saw, it. and when I pushed him out, it was quick. Anybody ever seen a lightning rod just kind of flash? Jesus doesn't exaggerate. If he said that Satan fell like lightning, that means he fell like lightning. Boom, it was quick. <laughs> hey, 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 church, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. Meaning I've given you authority to tread on every demonic spirit that would try to raise its ugly head against you. And, and I've given you this authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. But you have to walk in that authority. You have to resist the temptation to walk in your own pride. You have to submit yourself to the will of God. You have to call on the name of Jesus. You have to spend time in his word. You have to trust the leading of the Holy Spirit. Once pride gets in the way, you're not stomping on nothing. So he says this. So, so 72 guys are still like, man, that felt good. Man, I, just, I, 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 I laid my hands on somebody. That demon went running. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. Watch, watch out. Now, don't, don't, get, all, don't get all proudful right now. Don't, don't watch your pride. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice knowing that you have eternal life. Rejoice knowing that we're just passing through here and we're going home to be with King Jesus. Rejoice knowing that because of grace, he's raising his church. Rejoice knowing that each day his mercies are new and we're, we're raised up with Christ. We have resurrection life because of the finished work of the cross. Rejoice in knowing that you've got a home in heaven. This is why I believe the Apostle Paul said in Colossians 3.1, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. This is why the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3.14, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What prize, what prize are you chasing? What do your goals look like? Because if you've only set goals that pertain to everything horizontal, you've not set your goals high enough. You and I have been called to set our focus and our affections on, on things above. That prize. That prize, that, that kingdom prize, knowing that, listen, as you and I continue to live out each day, I can rest assured in his grace that I'm going home one day. And I've been invited into that holy place, that, that mountain, that one up and down that I was getting ready to tell you about earlier, but I'm getting ready to tell you now. This up and down thing. And you're probably going, where are you going with that? But wait, you see, I've realized that oftentimes when we are attempting to set our eyes on things above, we still think and assume and feel like there's this throne of judgment and God is sitting up there and every time I make a mistake, I feel like I'm getting further and further away. And what you need to realize is that is a lie from the pit of hell. The devil, that great deceiver. Remember when we read in Job chapter 1? When he went up to God, he went up to a God who was sitting on the throne of judgment. Only in the face of Lucifer. Because he was the one who was kicked out and condemned, that first worshiper. But then, oh man, someone else has been called up, a second worshiper. And when we approach the throne, 
It's the throne of grace. Stay with me. You see, Satan had lost the right to move up and down in the kingdom of God. This is why when he showed up that day and saw God, this is why when God asked him, where you been? The only answer he could give was to and fro, up and down on the earth. Because he had lost that right up and down in the kingdom of God. And that right has been given to somebody else. It's been given to a people who were made in his image. It's been given to a people who have also failed. But because he loved us so much, he had no desire to replace the second worshiper. So because we messed up, and because you and I were loved so much, he decided to give us his only son so that we wouldn't lose our place to be able to move up and down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, Satan can only move left and right. So he roams the earth seeking whom he may devour. He wants you to chase after the temporary things of this world. He doesn't want you to set your affections on things above. He doesn't want you to rejoice knowing that your name is written in heaven. He doesn't want you to be kingdom-minded. He doesn't want you to understand that perspective that Travis just preached about earlier in our worship time. He doesn't want you to understand that you don't have to see the problem as your end. There's a kingdom perspective that's been given to the sons and daughters of the living God. He doesn't want you He doesn't want you to be the replacement that, You see, I, I believe that's, that's why he still keeps playing his tunes Same old song The same old song you're not good enough. The same old song. You're going to fail again. It's the same old song. You're too afraid to move forward. It's the same old song. The people even in your circle are holding you to your past. It's the same old song. You're too angry to get it right. It's the same old song. You, you, you don't have enough in you to move forward. It's the same old song. You see, he thinks that we've been condemned like him. No, correction, he knows that you and I haven't been condemned like him. So he continues to lie in the effort to convince you and I that all that we have for us is just this. He's doing his best to try to distract you from the vertical kingdom connection that you and I have been called into. But. But praise God, Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 6. Twyla, can you get up here or else I'm going to preach a second message and I, I got to be mindful of the time. Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 6. Can we, look, look. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which, in which you, you once walked. Once. We're not walking like that anymore. We've got new goals. Amen. We're chasing an upward prize. These goals here on earth, they're too small for me. Following the course of this world. No, no, not anymore. Oh, look at this. Well, once upon a time, we were, we were following the prince of the power of the air. Look how the apostle Paul described that. This is not the guy that was moving up and down on the mountaintops of God's kingdom. No, he's, he's just, but he's still in the atmosphere right now, just moving around. The prince of the air, he, he can only go but so far. He doesn't have access. I'm going to tell you something. When he had that conversation with God referring to Job, I believe that God was firing shots at him. He's like, where you been? Where you been? Right? 
No, you didn't. Because you, you definitely ain't going this way. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, well I'm, I'm, I'm on the earth. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to disrupt some things. Oh, really? Really? Well, there, there's a people. You, you, you can try them if you want, but there's no trial, no test. No circumstance, no tribulation that's going to detour them from that upward prize that they've been called into. So you can try Job. You can try the people at Soul Cry Church. You, you go, go for it. But, but there's, a, there's a people that I'm raising up as a testimony.
to know, I need to make sure, thus saith the Lord, that this second worshiper knows that they don't need drums, they don't need bass, they don't need keys, they don't need a microphone. All they need is the power of the Holy Spirit working in them. So what is it that holds us back from rising up this hour as believers? What is it that holds us back from stepping forward and believing for more? What is it that holds you back, causing you to think that you no longer have direct access to his grace and mercy? What is it that causes you to think that maybe, maybe this cross, maybe this gospel doesn't work for me? Hey, 2,000 years ago when Jesus was on the cross, the temple curtain, I believe it was the hand of God. He tore it from top to bottom. I believe that it was symbolically one other act, just another act to remind us, you've got direct access to my throne of grace. We're on the rise. Would you stand up with me, church? I had no idea. I didn't know what, what Danielle was going to sing. I, I, you know, I, I saw it in the group text real quick. I saw it spirit break out. But I had no idea that the Lord was going to lead you to call us to this charge. Now. Here. Now. John chapter 4, two verses, but the hour is coming and is now here. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, we're built different. In spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Because when we attempt to give praise out of emotion, it never lasts. But when we worship in spirit and in truth, it becomes a lifestyle. It goes from just singing the songs we sang on Sunday to walking out these doors and living out every song. Now, here, now, here, raise up your church, God. Now, here, raise up your church, God. Oh, God, we say yes. We are your true worshipers. Born, Lord God, again. Lord, raised up with you through the finished work of the cross. We are your true worshipers. Thank you, Lord God, for meeting us in that place of sin and failure and darkness. Thank you, God, for not giving up on us. Thank you for not giving up on me. Thank you for not giving up on your sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us in the miry pit. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercies that are new every morning. Thank you for calling us into true worship in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us life through your death and your resurrection. Thank you for giving us freedom through the power of the cross. Thank you for the blood that washes, cleanses, and makes us whole again. So we worship you today. We lift up our voice right now and we worship you today. We lift up our voice and we worship you now today in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth. Oh God, set your people free right now. Lord God, give them an open heaven. 
Give them an open heaven. In spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth. Oh, God. Worship team, if you could come up here, please. anybody right now that feels like I'm not there I still feel distant I want to pray for those who might feel like I'm just I'm just kind of on this this plateau this 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 flat place I just I don't feel like I'm being raised up right now I I feel down pray for you. I want to invite you to come forward right now. There's no shame here. There's no shame. This is a safe place for you to receive prayer, to receive healing, and to experience the grace and the mercy of God. You might need to take just a friend's hand or a loved one's hand and you come up here now boldly. Prayer team, can you come up here? Just get up here quickly before because people are coming. I want to pray for people who might feel like I, I want I want to I want to be raised up I, I want to experience life I, I want that joy of knowing that I've got direct access to the king I, but I, I feel like I'm disconnected and if you feel like you've been disconnected I want you to come up here right now you come up right now Travis could you come here Make your way up here now. Yeah. Diane, if you could pray with Deb. Yeah, yeah, please. Oh, Lord, I'm about to send her. 